Hey guys, it's Valley again, and I'm here with my friend Scott, and we're going to be making an apple crumble this evening. Um, we kind of got all in the mood for it, so uh, we had a nice barbecue with some hamburgers and hot dogs and some andouille sausage, um, and now it's time for something sweet. So um, I'm going to do green apples today, and I also didn't have enough apples, so we popped a red pear in here today. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get started on cutting the apples. And I've got, we ended up having what, eight apples, eight apples. all together. And these are small. So, uh, you know, if you got bigger apples, obviously you could do less. Um, we are doing, I think it's a 10 by 5 pan today. Um, I'm not feeding a bunch of people today. So, um... I didn't go like a, a 9 by 13 so we're gonna do this and make this happen maybe <laughs> <laughs> and Scott's been helping me he helped uh, cut up the rest of the apples for me tonight and uh, so hopefully we're cutting them the same way but it really doesn't matter you can do small slices, you can do chunks, it's not going to make a big difference. Um, you know, to cook an apple is to cook an apple. Um, I know that there's some people out there that, um, you know, they care, maybe they want the apple um, extremely, you know, barely cooked, more of a bunch, more of a crunch to it. Um, I like it the softer the better, and then that way when I go to bite into it, I'm not taking a bite and then having half of it come dripping down my chin um, onto my lap. I don't know about you, but <laughs> I hate that. And, you know, especially if you're going to end up eating it fresh out of the oven, that would really suck. So I'm going to go ahead and chop these up and get these going. And. So I'm doing it, you know, not a thin slice. I mean, if you wanted to go really thin, you could use like a potato peeler or even a razor and you could put it in there and you could make it nice in a pretty pattern or whatever. Uh, but we're going to be doing a crumble over the top of it. Um, and a crumble is really basic and I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to keep continuing to chop these apples and um, so you don't have to watch. We'll be right back. Okay, so I have finished cutting the apples. I'm going to have Scott grabbing the bowl. He's become mute this evening. You want to put him in here since we're going to mix everything in here anyway? Yep, we're going to do that. Oh, wait, look. And you want to try and not put the seeds in with your apples because, you know what, my mother will end up biting in that. She'll break off a tooth and, you know, things just won't go well. So there we go. And um, the first thing that we're going to do is, I'm going to grab this and then he can grab me um, the lovely little lemon squeezer thing. I like to add um, lemon and it's probably for the best that you do. It helps the um, apples not oxidize and turn that lovely brown color. Um, it keeps them nice and fresh, nice and crisp, and it adds a little tartness to it. Do you usually do that when you make stuff like this? I always do that. All right, so there's that. Here, I'll do this one and then you can do the other one. And I think I told you in my last segment that if you don't have one of these to um, do lemons, you really, really, really need to get one because it gets every last bit of lemon out of there. As you can see, it keeps the seeds from going in there. And um, if you've got a cut like me, which it's sealed and nothing's going to happen, but um, boy, if you get lemon juice on that thing, it's going to burn, not be pleasant. And again, you just have something to put down your garbage disposal that uh, you know makes it smell nice instead of like moldy old food. So we've got that going. And next thing we're going to do is I'm going to have. Scott, go ahead and spray our glass dish with um, some nonstick cooking spray. Um, we are putting a crust on this. We're actually putting a crumble on the top. But because we're going to be adding sugar to our apples 
and um, we're also going to be adding some cornstarch and some flour. Uh, we don't want that getting stuck to our pan, and so it makes it a little bit easier cleanup and a little easier bit of uh, serving. Um, so next thing we're going to do is, since we've got our apples going here, we've added the lemon juice. Uh, go ahead and get me two tablespoons of the cornstarch. And why don't you hand me that sugar, and I can be doing the sugar while there you're you doing that. And he's become my servant for the evening. Yeah. Hey, do we want music? Yeah. Oh, you know, music would be really great. What about Echo? Oh, you know, we could try and see if Echo maybe can work off our Amazon Prime library. What should we listen to, Scott? I love Jack Johnson. I think that'd be really groovy right now. Oh, know? really? So Jack Johnson, you know, and he's got a song called Banana Pancakes. And, you know, since we're cooking, maybe we should listen to that. Show and how you um, do it. Well, you know, first of all, my husband had to convince us to put Echo into this video. So we're going to. The next thing that we're going to do is, oh, I'm going to hand that off to Scott so he can put two tablespoons of cornstarch in this. And that is to, it's going to thick up, thicken up our juices from the apples so that when you take a piece out, it's actually a piece. It's not going to fall apart. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to ask Echo if maybe it could play some Jack Johnson for us. So let's see how this goes, shall we? Echo, could you please play Jack Johnson banana can pancakes, please? Shuffling Jack Johnson. From Prime Music. Wow. I don't think it cut banana pancakes. But yeah. Oh, it didn't catch banana pancakes. Let's try again. Echo, could you please play B Jack Johnson Banana Pancakes, please? Banana Pancakes by Jack Johnson from Prime Music. All right. That's amazing, Molly. Imagine Dolly. that. Isn't that cool? I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Where has technology gone these days? It's just out of this world. It's not good. Okay. <laughs> this is silly. So anyway, Echo is actually this really cool thing. Um, it goes along with Alexa. And my husband just felt that we had to get to say, say hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Uh, you're funny. Okay, so we've done that. And uh, Alexa, can you turn the volume down to seven, please? Nope. Echo. It's not Ale Alexa, it's Echo. <laughs> Echo. Echo. Could you turn to volume seven, please? Echo. Volume five, please. Ooh, that's a little better. Now it'll be background <laughs> mood music. Cool. All right. All right. So. <laughs> that's great, isn't it? Hey, I we're think having I, a good time. I think I need one of these. Cheers. Cheers. All right. So now we've gotten our apples. And uh, I did put one pear in here. It's going to be really good, I think. So, oh, yeah, thanks. Uh, we're going to need that one, too. All right, so we did um, eight small Granny Smith apples, and then we also put one red pear in here. We did the juice of, we did a whole lemon, right? We did we a whole, whole lemon. lemon. All right, cool. And then we added two tablespoons of cornstarch, and I've got two tablespoons of flour there if you want to add that in for me. Okay. And why don't you hand me the um, cinnamon, and I'll get the cinnamon going. And you can go ahead and, here, we're going to close that. And, He's got some vanilla there. And I'm going to do, hand me that little measuring thing there. And then what's cool about when you get vanilla extracts or almond extracts or anything like that, most of the time the lid to your extract is a teaspoon. Just uh, food for thought there. Ah, food for thought. Okay, so go ahead and we're going to do... Um, why don't we go ahead and make it two teaspoons of the vanilla extract. And this really is a, especially when you're doing a crumble, what's cool is um, it's baking, but a crumble isn't necessarily science like a lot of other baking. So that's why I love to do stuff like this because I'm a wonderful cook and chef, but um, I'm not the best baker. So... 
anytime you want to impress somebody and do something like this, you can add, you can take away, and it's not going to mess with the science of your dish, so to speak. So now we're going to add two teaspoons of cinnamon, I think. I think that, what do you think? You think that's enough, or should we do one more for all these apples? Let's see. It looks pretty good right now. Yeah? Alright. So we'll keep it in two teaspoons. And then what we can do is we can do a little taste test. You know, check it out before we do it. Alright. I have an idea. Would you like to add some orange juice? Just a splash? Yeah, why not? Alright, cool. A lot of people add orange juice since we've already got some acidity from the lemon. We'll go ahead and add a little bit of orange. It's just another freshness to help, you know, brighten it up. Uh, because we plan on either um, serving this with homemade whipped cream or homemade vanilla ice cream and... You know, in the end, it's probably going to be a little bit rich, so it's nice to have that lightness in there. And he's got there some spoons right over there. Alrighty. And I'm going to go ahead and have you stir that up. And while he's stirring that up, I'm going to make the crumble to go on top of this bad boy. And there's a lot of different ways that you can make a crumble, and most of the time they're really easy. Um, Crumbles are on all sorts of things. Heck, if you don't end up making a crumble with it, you can lay it flat on a bake pan and a sheet pan. Stir it and stir it. If you added some nuts, you've got your own granola, which is really cool. But today we're making a crumble. So I've actually started some here. And what you're going to do is you're going to put it into a Ziploc bag. And I've probably already got, oh, a cup and a half of each. Um, quick oats and uh, a cup and a half of puffed rice cereal but we're gonna go ahead and add another half a cup of the puffed rice crispy rice cereal and another half a cup of quick oats so we've got that going and we're gonna mix it all together what do you think? A little more cinnamon? Oh, it smells good. It smells pretty good. Let's check it out. Here, I'm gonna grab this piece right here and we'll taste you taste it. No, it's perfect. Oh, it's delicious. So, while I go grab the butter that I forgot in the fridge, um, oh yeah, that's good. Very tasty. Oh, look, Chris got it. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> All right. So, get that out of our way here. You can grab that. And I'm going to dice this just a little bit smaller, and we actually put it in the freezer to get it really cold. So you keep working on that. I'm gonna get our sharp, dangerous knives out of the way. And make myself more room. You know, and as if you clean up, if you go, then you don't have a big gigantic mess at the end for all you new cooks. And uh, it just makes it easier in the long run. So I'm gonna take this and get it in our dish. And by now, we've got some maceration happening. We've got some liquid going on. And we wanna get all of that in there, look at that. Mm. Yeah, it smells killer, huh? <laughs> All right, and we're going to level this out. And you have to remember, um, this seems like a lot of apples, like it's going to overflow, but it's not. These are apples. They're going to shrink down. And we and remember, we do have a pear in here. Uh, obviously, you don't need to have a pear. Um, I just thought it'd be like a nice little combination. Go ahead and put that in there. All right, so we've got that. All right, Scott, go ahead, and we're going to put a nice thick layer of this on top. Um, you can, if you're concerned about calories, you can go ahead and do less of this. Um, you don't need to do it, but again, it's going to shrink down. Um, and we want it in there. We want that, the gooeyness to soak down into the apples and give the apple some flavor, but we also want that top to get nice and crisp. Heck yeah. So you could make this as thin or as thick as you want no biggie um, just if you make it pretty thick 
um, you're going to want to watch that it doesn't burn or that it doesn't get overly crisp. So maybe if you've got it really thick, what you may want to do is start the process out with some tin foil on top and make sure that those apples are really getting cooked down at the bottom. And um, great, nice shot. <laughs> But then viewers might like to see. Right? Because my husband's getting to figure out and know his new camera that we're doing this with. So we're having some trouble. So this is all just uh, working out the kinks here. So anyway, back to that. So um, if you do make it thicker, like what we have here, um, we're kind of in the middle between thick and thin. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it in the oven without foil on it. Um, and if it cooks and I'm worried about the apples, like I said, I like my apples really, really soft. Um, but you may like yours a little crisper. So if you do, go ahead and don't put the foil on and put it in. Just check it maybe every five to 10 minutes after it's been in there for <coughs> at least 20 minutes um, at 350. <coughs> and please remember to preheat your oven or it'll screw you every time, trust me. Have you ever done anything you didn't preheat the oven and you put it in? And oh yeah, you got to preheat the oven. And I have a tip for you. If, if you want it more crisp for the last five minutes, just crank the oven a little bit, you know? Oh, that is a good tip. <coughs> so, if you notice that underneath it's starting to get really soft, but your top isn't done yet, go ahead and maybe put your oven to 450 or maybe even broil. Maybe not. Well, I guess, but, but be careful. But if you put it on broil, quick, be uh, careful. When you do broil, you, we're talking, what, minute? Minute. Minute. So, the sugar probably not the best idea. And I have found that in my kitchen, one of these is an absolute lifesaver. If I did not have a timer, I would be the worst cook on the face of the planet, don't you think? Yeah. Especially when it comes to desserts. Um, always use a timer. It's just helpful. So what we're going to do is for the thickness that we have, um, I've preheat my oven to 350 and I'm going to start out, I think at about 15 minutes and at 15 minutes, I'm going to check it, see how it's doing. And, um, for, then we'll go from there and we'll let you know, but all ovens vary. So it's always best to kind of keep an eye on it, but don't open and close the oven all the time. Because your oven will adjust to that and your temperature won't be constant and it'll end up taking you 20 minutes longer and then like the next time you go to make it you'll think oh wow well it took 40 minutes eh, eh, eh. it won't work so always use a timer and don't check it for the first 15 minutes and we're gonna pop it in the oven and we'll get right back to it awesome can I make a suggestion what suggestion can you make Chris echo Oh, God. Echo, set an alarm for 15 minutes, please. 15 minutes, starting now. Two, one. Okay, so we're back from our short little break, and um, I needed to get the brown sugar, so we're back. For you, probably wasn't a break, but for us, it was. So what are you having here, Valley? All right, so all together, because we had some pre-made, because I made a blueberry one eh, a couple weeks ago. So all together, we actually have two cups of puffed rice cereal and then two cups of the fast quick oats. And we've got a half a cup of brown sugar. So now we're going to add another half a cup of brown sugar. And go ahead and pack this bad boy. You know, you don't need any air pockets in there, plus it'll take away. We want this to be sweet. So there's another half cup of that. Here. Oh, yeah. Okay, take that. You got it. I love it when I have a man slave. It's fun. Okay, so next is um, I decided for the apples. I'm gonna go ahead. Yeah, I'm sure you love that, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Scott's a great cook slash chef, and um, he's at his own food truck. He works at multiple restaurants. And he's great, but tonight he's helping me out. Hey, thank you. So. Man slave and all. Yeah, and he makes a wonderful vegetarian chorizo. You should check it out. So um, what I decided to do is I'm going to take a half a stick of butter because we do have um, the sugar, the flour, the cornstarch, the cinnamon, 
But I thought we needed just a little bit of salt to offset that. Oh, and we've got the lemon and the orange juice. So um, I decided I wanted to put a little butter in there just for a little salt. I'm a I'm a salt and I'm a sweet and savory gal, so I like to do that. I don't know about you, but yeah, it's good. It also helps bind. Yeah. So here, I'm gonna hand that to you, and you can stir that up again. While I get that in there, and you stir that up, and I wipe my hands. We're gonna go ahead and grab the dish that Scott prepared for me. We went ahead and sprayed some uh, nonstick cooking spray in here. We're gonna get that ready so it's all ready to go so it doesn't stick. Next thing we're gonna do is, the reason I'm doing this is in a plastic bag is um, so that we can really mush it up. We don't wanna smush it, you know, like beat it with, you know, a rolling pin or your fist to get out your male aggression or female aggression. Um, so we're going to add this and it's still pretty cold. Um, we could actually, if it takes a long time or unfortunately like me here right now, it's soft because it's sitting under all these lovely lights and I'm a butter fanatic. So you're going to put it in the freezer and frozen it for a little bit just so it stay kind of hard. So we're gonna seal this up, we're gonna, we're gonna leave some air in the bag. Why would we leave air in the bag? Well, because we're gonna mix it all up right now. So Scott, I'm gonna switch you. All right. You take this and keep mixing it up. We have me the bowl of apples and we're gonna get it in there. There you go. So you keep working on that. I'm gonna get our sharp, dangerous knives out of the way. and make myself more room. You know, and as if you clean up, if you go, then you don't have a big gigantic mess at the end for all you new cooks. And uh, it just makes it easier in the long run. So, I'm gonna take this and get it in our dish. And by now, We've got some maceration happening. We've got some liquid going on. And we wanna get all of that in there, look at that. Mm. Yeah, it smells killer, huh? <laughs> All right, and we're gonna level this out. And you have to remember, um, this seems like a lot of apples, like it's gonna overflow, but it's not. These are apples, they're gonna shrink down. And we and remember, we do have a pear in here. Uh, obviously, you don't need to have a pear. Um, I just thought it'd be like a nice little combination. Go ahead and put that in there. All right, so we got that. All right, Scott, go ahead, and we're gonna put a nice thick layer of this on top. Um, you can, if you're concerned about calories, you can go ahead and do less of this. Um, you don't need to do it, but again, it's going to shrink down. Um, and we want it in there. We want that, the gooiness to soak down into the apples and give the apples some flavor, but we also want that top to get nice and crisp. Heck yeah. So you could make this as thin or as thick as you want. No biggie. Um, just if you make it pretty thick, um, you're gonna wanna watch that it doesn't burn or that it doesn't get overly crisp. So maybe if you've got it really thick, what you may wanna do is start the process out with some tin foil on top and make sure that those apples are really getting cooked down at the bottom. And um, great, nice shot. <laughs> Something viewers might like to see. Right? Because my husband's getting to figure out and know his new camera that we're doing this with. So we're having some trouble. So this is all just uh, working out the kinks here. So anyway, back to that. So um, if you do make it thicker, like what we have here, um, we're kind of in the middle between thick and thin. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it in the oven without foil on it. Um, and if it cooks and I'm worried about the apples, like I said, I like my apples really, really soft. Um, but you may like yours a little crisper. So if you do, go ahead and don't put the foil on. 
and put it in. Just check it maybe every five to 10 minutes after it's been in there for at least 20 minutes um, at 350. And please remember to preheat your oven or it'll screw you every time, trust me. Have you ever done anything you didn't preheat the oven and you put it in? And oh yeah, you gotta preheat the oven. And I have a tip for you. If, if you want it more crisp for the last five minutes, just crank the oven a little bit, you know? Mm. That is a good tip. <coughs> so if you notice that underneath it's starting to get really soft, but your top isn't done yet, go ahead and maybe put your oven to 450 or maybe even broil. Maybe not. Well, I guess, but, but be if careful. you put it on broil, quick, be huh? careful. When you do broil, you're, we're talking what minute? Minute. Minute. So it's a sure probably not a best idea. And I have found that in my kitchen, one of these is an absolute lifesaver. If I did not have a timer, I would be the worst cook on the face of the planet. Don't you think? Okay. Especially when it comes to desserts. Um, always use a timer. It's just helpful. So what we're going to do is for the thickness that we have, um, I've preheat my oven to 350 and I'm going to start out, I think at about 15 minutes and at 15 minutes, I'm going to check it, see how it's doing. And, um, for, then we'll go from there and we'll let you know, but all ovens vary. So it's always best to kind of keep an eye on it, but don't open and close the oven all the time because your oven will adjust to that and your temperature won't be constant and it'll end up taking you 20 minutes longer and then like the next time you go to make it you'll think oh wow well it took 40 minutes eh, eh, eh. it won't work so always use a timer and don't check it for the first 15 minutes and we're gonna pop it in the oven and we'll get right back to it awesome can I make a suggestion what suggestion can you make Chris echo Oh, God. Echo, set an alarm for 15 minutes, please. 15 minutes, starting now. Oh, my God, she did it again. So she's going to be buzzing off the hook. Yeah, so we're going to have probably a, a timer set at 15 minutes and a timer set, set for 15 minutes, 30 seconds. But for the rest of you, you can invest in a little timer like this. Or with all your new fancy phones, you have a new fancy phone, right? I have a new fancy phone. You have a new fancy phone. Um, they all have a timer on it. If not, get an alarm app and set your timer for 15 minutes at first. Then we're going to check it again. Be right back. Or if you have an echo, <laughs> you can set the timer for 15 minutes. But for the rest of us, Use a timer. Oh my gosh, she did it again. So she's going to be buzzing off the hook. Yeah, so we're going to have probably a, a timer set at 15 minutes and a timer set, set for 15 minutes, 30 seconds. But for the rest of you, you can invest in a... And we're going to scoop this out and pop it in here. And we had made some homemade vanilla ice cream last yeah. week. Totally homemade. And I'm gonna have Scott go ahead and get some ice cream out for us. Oh, look at that. Homemade vanilla ice cream. You can't beat it. And you want this or you want to eat with your hands? No, I'll eat with this. You'll eat with that? Alright, give it a try, Scott. Let's see how it tastes. Okay. You're hot. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that, it just came out of the oven. <laughs> Delicious. All right, let's check it out. I'm gonna take mine, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow on it. <laughs> Still hot. <laughs> wow, but damn, that's good. Really good. Um, you want some more? No. Uh, no. <laughs> the apples are soft, but they still got a little bit of a crunch to them, but not enough that they're like crunchy, crunchy. And yeah, I got to do this again too. Mm. Wow. Mmm. With the vanilla ice cream. This thing rocks, and I've got my husband behind the camera right now, begging for a bite too. So, um, 
The next time you want a pretty quick and easy dessert, you can't beat this. You don't have to make a pie crust. You don't have to do anything like that. As long as you've got some oatmeal hanging around and a Rice Krispie cereal and some apples and some sugar, you are going to be on your way. And anything else on top is just an added bonus. So, uh, cheers. Here you go, babe. Have some ice cream and <coughs> fucking crumble. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Scott. Hey, thanks for having me. All right. Um. Hey there, cheers. We're back. And here is our apple crumble. Um, I know I had told you to check every 15 minutes. This took about 50 minutes in a 350 degree oven. Um, we've got a nice golden brown on it, our crumble, there's a little hard crumble, there's a little soft crumble. And now what we're going to do is scoop. And you can add a little cinnamon uh, to the top of this and it'd be great. Um, just a little more cinnamon from what's in with the apples, you know. And we're going to scoop this out and pop it in here. <laughs> And we had made some homemade vanilla ice cream last week. Totally homemade. And I'm going to have Scott go ahead and get some ice cream out for us. Oh, look at that. Homemade vanilla ice cream. You can't beat it. And you want this or you want to eat with your hands? No, I'll eat with this. You'll eat with that? All right. Give it a try, Scott. Let's see how it tastes. Okay. Hot. It's hot. <laughs> Imagine that. It just came out of the oven. <laughs> Delicious. All right, let's check it out. I'm gonna take mine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow on it. <laughs> Still hot. <laughs> Wow, but damn, that's good. Really good. Um, you want some more? No. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the apples are soft, but they still got a little bit of a crunch to them, but not enough that they're like crunchy, crunchy. And yeah, I got to do this again too. Mm. Bomb. Mmm. With the vanilla ice cream, this thing rocks. And I've got my husband behind the camera right now begging for a bite, too. So, um, the next time you want a pretty quick and easy dessert, you can't beat this. You don't have to make a pie crust. You don't have to do anything like that. As long as you've got some oatmeal hanging around and a Rice Krispie cereal and some apples and some sugar you are going to be on your way and anything else on top is just an added bonus so uh cheers here you go babe have some ice cream and <coughs> fucking crumble thank you thanks for being here scott hey thanks for having me all right